Okay, we uh, start up again. We are uh, inc increasing the complexity, going from one dimensional to a two dimensional problem. Now, <coughs> you have to recall a little bit uh, potential theory from fluid mechanics. You had something called a stream function, and this equation here, Laplace equation for the stream function, that means you have a flow that is uh, non-rotational, the curl is equal to zero in practice, meaning you don't have any viscosity. So you only need to solve this one to find stream function everywhere, and then you can plot it, and then you have the streamlines. Then from uh, the definition of a stream function, you can find the velocity components. From the velocity components, you could then easily use Bernoulli to find the pressure. So solve this one in a two-dimensional region. Say we want to do this very, very simple. I have a constant flow entering between two parallel plates. So uh, here, then I would say something like this. The value for the stream function here is zero, and here up in the sky, he is one. Then uh, you should recall from streamlines, then the flow will be captured between here. To the left, <coughs> I will then send in values where my stream function should linearly increase from 0 to 1. And inside here, I want to have the solution, and on the outlet here, I have no idea. So there I'm going to use Neumann condition saying x derivative of a psi equal to zero. Now, solve that one using uh, the Laplace. Well, then this one is of course roughly equal to, and then you'll have the double derivative in both directions. Uh, so now we are talking u i plus one j u i j, well actually not u, it should be p c of course, u i minus 1 j divided by delta x square plus and then with delta y square and then of course we do it easy, we say delta x equals delta y so then they can be uh, removed since it's in zero on the other side. So let us start now with a new uh, script <coughs> and uh, same start, clear all, close all, CLC and we save this one as uh, Poisson 2D. So here I now use it simple, we have a hundred by a hundred. <coughs> ah, One hundred, thank you. <coughs> like that. And I assume then implicitly delta x equals delta y, so I don't have anything, uh, problems uh, there. See? My unknown is then zeros, and now I will say E max and J max, they include the boundary values. So now everything initially equal to zero. We have to put uh, the top one should be one. So that should be C for uh, all i's should go from 1 to ah go away ah does he exist already look see yeah that's nasty when you invent a variable with a name that already exists that's a bad idea okay we should call him something else Call him P.
that's better. <coughs> and then the top values for all uh, i's, but uh, j should then be j max. Everybody there should be equal to 1. Are we allowed to do that? I think so. Yeah, should be OK. And then uh, we have to take the left boundary conditions. So for uh, j equals 1 all the way up to j max, p of number 1 j should be equal to what? Well, he should, he should be equal to j divided by j max. Well, actually not. That's not entirely true, is it? First one should be 0, and last one should be 1. The last one I agree with, but not the first one. So we have to do something like uh, this, minus 1, divided by j max minus 1. Now it should be correct. j equals 1. He is 0, j equals j max, he should be 1. There we go. So, if we have a peak of that one, uh, well, not so easy to plot, is it? Mm, we try. Just make a contour of P. Well, sadly, MATLAB, he flips it, of course, so it's sort of upside down here. Uh, not so easy to see. Never mind, we are interested in the solution, so skip that one. Solve that one now using the SOR method. Successive over relaxation. We are going to need an omega should be uh, somewhere between 1 and 2. And then for iteration number 1 all the way up to, I don't know, like that. And then we have, yeah, we can keep this residual that we had the last time. Residual is 0, and then we take all the internal points from 2 to E max minus 1. And for J, to j max minus 1. Now write your uh, zero function. Write it on the form equal to 0. Well, th that's actually what we have here, more or less already. So that is p of i plus 1 j plus p i minus 1 j not minus, should be plus. And then j plus 1 and j minus 1. <coughs> then you have four times the center point. That should be your uh, zero equation. If, if it's solved, fij should be equal to 0. And then we just check it by adding all the absolute value of all these residuals, like that. Then update the, uh, the uh, new value. pij equals the old one. How did, how did uh, that one look? Well, it will be the sort of the same recipe, 1 minus omega here. And the rest plus omega multiplied with, and then you have all of these four values around your center point, like that. But what was uh, the recipe? 
<coughs> the new one, say C i j new should be from the old one i j minus omega f i j divided by the derivative f i j with respect to the center point that we are looking at and in my stencil this one equals to minus four <coughs> So that means now I have to divide everything here by 4. That should be it. <coughs> and an end. But then I am missing one thing that is the right boundary condition. The left one they have been given initially here should be numbers between 0 and 1 so they are okay but I have to do something to the right so I copy that for loop down here <coughs> so that means the rightmost uh, unknowns should be for index emax simply equals the one to the to the left emax minus one j so that's a crude uh, first order uh, approximation for the Neumann condition derivative equal to zero at the end and then we try to plot it contour it <coughs> so let's see how this one uh, performs. Well, he did something. Oh, I forgot to draw now. Draw now. And clearly we are going to need more than a hundred iterations. Actually, when I just write contour P like that, MATLAB has sort of switched uh, the indexes. So you have to transpose that matrix just for cosmetic purposes. Makes it a little bit easier like that. So now this is the initial uh, area. Everything is zero. We have the streamline down here is zero. Top one is one. And then I have given him uh, initially uh, linear variation from 0 to 1. So here he starts. Of course you all know the solution. Should be just straight line uh, throughout the entire domain. And you see it takes time. Actually MATLAB uses a lot of CPU to calculate the contour. Then he has to do a lot of interpolation. So contour, that's something you actually you should avoid inside a for loop. So this is taking forever. Let's try to speed up the process now by introducing uh, the omega. One point um, ninety-nine. Let's see if that one uh, helps. Now we have an omega very close to two. A little bit violent maybe, but um, you see, not so stupid idea much faster indeed. So an omega, mm, absolutely uh, uh, worth using here. So let's stop him, we don't need that many iterations. The optimum omega, I don't really know, let's say 1.95. Yeah, ah, maybe a little bit bigger. You just have to try and fail a little bit here to find a good one. Mm. <coughs> 97, uh, maybe 99 was a very good idea actually. Oh, it was too big. So 97, 98, something like that. I'm not sure. 
<coughs> yeah, not so bad. Okay, now we have the tools that we need for simulating the flow around anything. And as anything, I'm now going to use uh, an image. So we put something here, could be a house, could be anything, and then we can now calculate the potential theory flow around that object. And uh, what should we uh, use as a uh, problem? Well, I put out a couple of um, images on your uh, 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 homepage on this learning. So I'll use some of those. Let's see if they are here. They should be. Mm, local disk. Mm. Here we are. <coughs> so simulate the flow around uh, 313. Uh, here I have sort of cheated. I have to had to edit the Im image a little bit. I have moved the card down so he touches the ground. If not, you should then actually have some flow under the car, which is uh, hard to know. Now, since he's uh, touching the ground, the zero streamline will actually be sort of everything here around uh, the car, including Donald. Most drawings, uh, you will see the hat is one meters behind him or something. Mm. Here is on his head. So I want to use this one as uh, the problem. So simulate the flow around him. How can we do that? Well, <coughs> using uh, this image is going to be very hard. It's a fairly big one. So I took the same image, but much smaller. So I'll use that one instead. The big one is going to take forever. So I have to use uh, this one. Uh, you have a lot of uh, image tools in uh, MATLAB. So first, to uh, find out how big it is, you have something called image file info. And then you give him the name, image one small dot JPEG, like that. And then from this info, now, you can find the size. Uh, image. Uh, f uh, no, it should be correct. I think. <coughs> EMF info. No, it's correct. No, in the image name. Ah. Yeah, thank you. image. Thank you. So this one will now be the info dot width. And in the y direction info dot height. So uh, that one should be OK. Furthermore, I need some representation of that image into my program. So here I just uh, the uh, RGB, red, green, uh, and blue numbers for it. And that one is now an image read. And then I use the same image. Like that. an image show there you can actually see the image on the screen so let's try that one yes looks okay as you can see it's quite crude so i had to uh, do it that like that because now the pixels here is going to be my mesh so uh, this is going to be a rather heavy, heavy program. <coughs> so now you see we have an um, image or a mesh system 250 by 150 
The other one, I think, is um, 800 by 1,000 or something. Fairly big. Okay, <coughs> then we have the image, and you have the RGB representation of it. RGB, ah, that's a uh, color uh, code. So if you print it out, you will get the idea. RGB, <coughs> it's actually numbers, but you give a number from 0 to 255 for each of the color components. So if all three of them is 255, you have pure white. If all of them are zero, you have pure black. So I will use that one now to sort of find my image, logically. So how to do that? Well, <coughs> first of all, I create a matrix A. Is zeros of Emax and Jmax. So that's my entire uh, domain. And then I use him, sort of as a logical switch. If uh, the position inside him is uh, true, then I have a live uh, cell, in which I will have to calculate the stream function. If he's uh, in zero, then I'm inside the image and shouldn't do anything. So how to find that one? Well, <coughs> we just jump inside the domain here for all i's and for all j's. <coughs> Something like that. Then I say my a equals. Then <coughs> I take the sum of all these three RGB values. So that should now be uh, RGB, should then be possible to write it like that. I have to flip it, sadly, because of um, MATLAB's stupid way of uh, writing matrices. Uh, so now he adds all three uh, components together. And if that one is say uh, smaller than 250 not up there 255 multiplied with 3 smaller or equal to then he is some something different from white so smaller than that would mean uh, this is true or false but i can't really use 255 because from the uh, the graphics this image, he looks white, but it's not white. It's uh, some levels of white, a little bit light uh, gray, actually. So you have to use a number, what did I use? 230, I think. Something like that. <coughs> So here I should now have a logical vector, A, a matrix, A, that should put out my, my domain. I can show you. Ah, something wrong here. Mm, what's wrong? That one should be correct, I think. Mm. RGB, not RPG. Ah, thank you. Uh, G. RGB. There we go. <coughs> so you see my matrix A, that is now uh, 250 by 150. If you want to have a look at it, you have something called SPY. SPY will give you a visual uh, image of your matrix, but he will just put a dot if you have something different from zero. And there also you see the pane with MATLAB, how he operates with the matrices. So if you want to have it more correct, you have to flip it 
transpose it. So spy a transpose give us the image. So there you see when he is uh, zero, then you have a live cell. If he is one, then you have a dead cell. It's inside uh, something solid and shouldn't be calculated. So this is now my, my uh, domain, you might say. <coughs> Okay, that should now be the A matrix, should be okay there. Uh, yeah, now we leave it like that. Then we go down to the solution down here. <coughs> so now what? Everything else should be as it uh, was initially. But, uh, well, we have the image show. We need to keep that one. How did I do that? Uh, mm -mm -mm. Yeah, you have the image show and the contour. Yeah, here we need, <coughs> here we need a little bit of uh, trick. First, hold on. <coughs> that means you have displayed <coughs> the uh, image up here, so you keep it. Then we create a contour plot on top of it. But now I have to take that one and I had to multiply him by 255. And also to give him a range. He should go then from 0 0.05 with step 0 0.05 all the way up to 1 multiplied with 255 or else it became ra rather strange. The reason is that when you have used the image show up here you have a color, uh, you have chosen the colors already so uh, to make it these numbers from uh, 0 to 1, they sort of have to be upgraded. So let's see if that one works. Hold on. Then we need an hold off as well. <coughs> yeah. Well, he also is flipped. Mm, not so good. <coughs> Where was that? Yeah, we have to flip him somehow. What did I do? What did I do? Image. Ah, never mind. <coughs> we just continue the program here. <coughs> so we need this one down here. Contour, like that, and then again we need this image show, I believe I used, yep. <coughs> like that. So let's see how this one operates. Well, now we actually get the solution that we had the last time, but upside down. So now you sort of get just the flow straight through the entire domain. Uh, this is not what we wanted. So we have to do something up here. We have to sort of specify, calculate the new stream function, yes, but only if you are where my uh, matrix A, I, J. If he is white, then it was okay, then we should calculate. If not, then we should not uh, calculate the new stream function at all. So uh, we need this one to be uh, not 
meaning he should be false. So you write it like mm, that. That means if not a, if he is not true, then you can do it like that. <coughs> Let's see if that one helps. But I'm afraid I get it the no, not info. Mm. Ah, debugging. Uh, something is uh, fishy. We still have to flip him. So something still is wrong here. Mm, what was that? Uh, yeah. The reason is when MATLAB operates with an image, he sort of have uh, the Urigu sadly up here. Then he sort of goes backwards. So I have to invert my uh, P value. So it must then be something else here. Should be then one minus to have it correct. And also it shouldn't be the top level that is uh, uh, one it should be the bottom level. Let's see if that one helps. That looks more like it. There we go. So maybe the omega here is a little bit too big. Typically when you get too much noise, a mm, little bit too omega maybe. If you keep him a little bit smaller then might be better. Say, what's our omega here? 98, mm, 97 maybe. <coughs> oh. Still maybe a little bit too big, but he will get there. So there you have the flow around uh, Donald Duck and his uh, 313. <coughs> Any questions to that one? <coughs> if you uh, use the larger image, clearly you need a bigger omega. You could here also use the direct method to solve the entire problem like that. But I think you will run into problems. Maybe not this one. Should be small enough, 250 by 150. But with the big uh, image, Ah, you're in trouble. I can show you. Image one. Image one. This is going to take forever. But now actually MATLAB spends more CPU time producing all these images, these contour plots, then we're actually doing the calculation. So to speed up this one, you should not print that many contour plots. I can show you. If we crashes him, and then we have image show, that one doesn't take time, and then we can um, just remove this one. And we can say a title. Mm, what should we write as a title? Iteration number equal um, int to string iter. <coughs> So there you see how fast you do the uh, iterations now, up to 100, and then he plots the contour. No, he <laughs> of course he doesn't. <laughs> I have to tell him that. 
<coughs> here. So it's still uh, a way to go before you have the correct solution, but at least you see now how much faster he will be than instead if you are plotting uh, the contour plot at every time, every iteration, then it's really going to take forever. You see, that one is really slow. So no MATLAB uh, is not that fast S with contour. That's not a good one. If you can use surf in uh, as we have done before in uh, animations, uh, surf it doesn't take time at all, almost. But uh, contour, oh, that's a different story. Okay. Any questions from you? <coughs> then we stop here. <coughs>